Exactly. Uh, it's 20 minutes past six. Tourist attractions which rely on foreign visitors are suffering at the moment. Um, ben is out and about in London this morning and he's at the Tower of London. Looks like a rather beautiful morning there. But Ben, um, Tower of London, when was its doors last open? Yeah, really interesting uh, as we look at the impact that it's having on all sorts of industries. Morning to you both. Uh, just look at this glorious start to the day down here in London. One of London's oldest buildings up against some of its newest, the Tower of London there next to the City of London. But down here on the side of the River Thames, we've got this glorious vista, the Tower of London. Look, and as you said, really struggling because like all tourist infrastructure right now, destinations, attractions, there just aren't the same number of visitors coming to this country as there were before this crisis. Normally, they'd get about 15,000 visitors through the doors here every single day in the summer. At the moment, there are just 500 or so coming through, partly because they're restricting how many come in. They've got to keep an eye on them to make sure people can stay apart. But foreign visitors who would normally make up the bulk of travellers here are just not coming to the UK. So let me introduce you to Andrew, who is the governor here at the Tower of London. Andrew, talk me through the impact on you. 15,000 down to what, 500? That's a big, big difference. It's a massive drop. And it means that as a charity, we're losing overall £98 million of income over the course of this financial year. In the tower, uh, we would normally see, as you say, about 3 million visitors a year, and in the busy days in the summer, up to around 15,000. So this place would be a mass of visitors during those busy periods. It's dropped right down. What it means, though, is as it's dropped right down, it's created a really special opportunity for those who come. We just need more. Yeah, I mean, it's lovely to be here and practically have the place to yourself, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But that's not good news for your finances. There's a lot of upkeep for something like this. You need to pay all the bills. How do you do that? Absolutely. So we need to pay the bills. Uh, we need to make sure the places look amazing. We need to pay our staff. And to do that, we need visitors. We are completely self-funded or visitor, fu visitor funded. We need that steady flow of people coming through. And the international market is one of our biggest markets. Yeah, give me a sense of where people normally come from. Because look, you've got quite a lot of tourists that will come domestically. So people on staycation, coming to the capital, having yeah. a look around. But I imagine the bulk of your visitors coming somewhere like this are from abroad. For the tower, around 70% of our visitors come from overseas. Mm. And in that market, a large proportion is from the United States. So we hope that people are going to begin to come back, you know, particularly those from Europe who can now travel. And with no quarantine restrictions, it means that people from France and Germany and the rest of Europe can come in really easily. Mm. We think that the US market is going to take a much longer time to pick up. But over that time, we're really just trying to struggle to make ends meet without that normal flow. Yeah, and do you worry about how long that will take? Because, you know, the summer months, as you said, normally when you can make most of your money, tide you over for the rest of the year. Yeah. You know, the clock is ticking, isn't it, for those summer months? And we get into winter where you might have a quiet period anyway. Well, it's, it's a huge worry. So that's why over the course of the whole financial year, we're going to be losing millions. Mm. Next year, we hope that it will start to pick up slowly. Uh, we don't predict, though, that this market will recover until around 2024. Yeah, it's pretty bleak, isn't it? It's tough yeah. for, for everyone in this industry. Uh, now, give me a sense of what it's like inside. We're going to take you know, viewers inside a little later, but you've been living in the tower during lockdown, so yeah. four months inside the tower, pretty much on your own with some of the beef eaters. <laughs> How is it? Well, there's a small community that lives in the tower. It's around 125, yeah. mostly the Yoma Warders and their families, yeah. and I'm fortunate enough to live there as well with my family. It was a very strange place to be during lockdown. The novelty of having the place to ourselves wore off quite quickly <laughs> because it really only comes to life when people come to visit. Yeah. And as I say, this is, no, this is the best time you could possibly come to the Tower of London. Yeah. If you're a Londoner and you've always said, oh, it's too busy, it's full of tourists, it's not at the moment, yeah. please come. Uh, good message. Andrew, for now, thank you. Really nice to see you. Uh, and we'll show you inside a little later. Fascinating as it is. It's so long since I've been inside the Tower of London. So we're going to have a look around a little later in the programme and give you a sense of what they're doing to make it safe for visitors to come here, but also dealing with that big fall off in the number of foreign visitors. So uh, we'll show you around a little later and show you some of the glorious views uh, down here on the Thames in central London this morning. And the sprinklers are just starting, so I might get wet. I'll see you soon. <laughs> well, there is something absolutely beautiful about central London early in the morning, isn't it, Ben, on a summer's day like that? It is quarter to eight. Good morning to you. We're talking about tourist attractions, which rely on foreign visitors really struggling at the moment, even though there's gorgeous sunshine out there. Take a look at the Tower of London. What a sight for you this morning. 
with a slightly cloudy sky, but I think it's going to improve. Nick will tell us more about that. Why are we there, Charlie? Well, Ben is uh, talking to us. Morning to you, Ben. Uh, you are in a privileged place today, and uh, what a glorious sight. Yeah. One of the problems, though, is the lack of tourists who would normally be flocking there this time of year. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And how gorgeous is that view this morning? Right across the Tower of London to the City of London, the oldest buildings next to the newest buildings here in the capital. And you're right, look, I've got this place entirely to myself this morning. Uh, it's so interesting given the change in where visitors are coming from, how many are coming here. Normally they get about 15,000 visitors through the doors here every single day. But there's apparently about 500 given that fall off in the tourism numbers and the lack of foreign visitors. And this is what they would come here to see, the White Tower at the heart of the Tower of London, built in 1078. So this place pretty quiet right now. You can almost have free reign. But let me introduce you to these guys, the Ravens at the Tower. There are eight of them. Their names, Poppy, Melina, George, Erin, Rocky, Jubilee, Grip and Harris. And the legend has it that when these guys leave, the tower collapses and the kingdom falls. Uh, so we'll show you some of those a little later. They'll be let out and they're getting used to some of the visitors uh, coming back to the tower. Let me introduce you though to Patricia, who's from Visit Britain. Patricia, morning. Good morning. Look, big fall off in visitor numbers. Quite clearly, airports have been shut. Flights are not operating. People aren't coming here. Talk to me about the industry. It's a tough time right now, isn't it? It's a really tough time. I mean, the industry is talking about having three winters. You know, they just started to open in the spring. Everything shut down. Um, really, I mean, delighted to be up and opening, but this isn't necessarily operating economically. And you can see in the cities, you know, those international visitors are just not coming at the moment. So, yeah, there are some domestic visitors who are coming, staycations, and we're talking about that on the programme as well, people that are travelling within the UK, but it's that lucrative international market that's really a problem. Absolutely. I mean, we were, we were forecasting £30 billion of revenue from international visitors this year. We've cut £20 billion off that forecast. So what does that mean for jobs? Because we know tourism a huge employer here as well, isn't it? Well, it is. And, and tourism, you know, employs 3.1 million people right across the country. Every £55,000 that an international visitor spends in this country creates another job. So a really a job creating industry. And you can see that businesses are just wondering whether they can afford to take staff back when furlough ends, yeah. whether they can make enough money during the summer months to keep them going through the winter and that and that's the real challenge yeah and I was going to say because it's the summer and I was talking to Andrew who's the governor here uh, about that it's a summer period when tourism sites make all of their money to get them through winter but we know all year round they have running costs absolutely and, and when we see the international um, flight arrivals I mean we're talking about 92 percent down for August mm. so there's an awful lot of work to do in, in getting businesses profitable now that may be dependent on us going out and traveling but also making sure for the autumn yeah. we're really talking to those international visitors which realistically is Europe at the moment yeah I wanted to ask you that you know how do you do this because every country around the world is trying to get people back it's a tough time to be doing it how do you persuade someone to come here and not somewhere else Paris or New York or whatever it, it is fiercely competitive and every tourist board is facing the same problem and going for the same solution mm. what we've been doing is we haven't been quiet during these months of lockdown we've been using social media in our feeds to really boost that um, aspiration to come to Britain, to talk about British culture and films and history and why you would want to come. We've been working with Travel Trade to, to make sure that as soon as the lights go on, they are absolutely ready to sell Britain. And we're, and we're just about to launch our major campaign in Europe, working with commercial partners to really amplify that message and get the bookings over the line. Good luck. You've got a big Thank job you. ahead of you, Thank Patricia, you. for now. Thank you. Really nice to see you. Uh, so there you have it. I mean, the view uh, of Visit Britain, certainly a real challenge to get those visitors back here. We know there are logistical issues of actually getting people here. But as you've been hearing as well from John about getting uh, UK visitors to come back to some UK sites, that will also be one of the key things to making places like this still viable. Um, I'll show you around a bit more a little later. See you soon. Oh, really looking forward to being shown around, Ben.